I want to speak to you this morning once again on commitment. Somebody say commitment. Say it again. Say commitment. I trust that most of us have learned a lot of things from what we've been teaching this month, a month of commitment where are getting devoted, dedicated, loyal to some things that are helping us in life. Amen. So we started by come open the altar. We started by talking about four things that you must be committed to because commitment is some form of obligation. It binds you. It actually controls you. It tells you what to do. It takes out your willpower and makes sure that you are directed by what you are committed to, asks you or tells you to do. Amen. This dawn at us. It is normal to take water. Amen. So just permit me to take my water. Eh? Before I collapse here and you say all kinds of things. Hallelujah. So I need to take water. If you really want to be seen as a committed person or if you can assess yourself and know that you are committed to something, Commitment always ignores wrecks. Commitment. It ignores wrecks. You actually don't check the wrecks, the consequences that comes. You ignore it. The AAs, alcoholic addicts, you pray for them. Psychologically, you speak to them. You help them, give them treatment. You leave them right now, they still go for the alcohol. A pastor who used to preach the word of God. I'm speaking to you today on being committed to your future. To your future. That's the last point I said I was going to talk about. Who has been preaching so well when we were growing up? Saw him preaching. Vehicles, the markets, a great evangelist. Later on, saw him drinking, was drinking. We prayed for him, we helped him. To come out from it. Took him to the hospital. They assessed him and they told him that your kidney is being destroyed. You must stop drinking. And he knows that if he drinks, he have but a short life. You leave him to go on his own. And he must drink again. Someone picks a cigarette box. Check what is written there. A professor has been to school, somebody who can read. Reads. And the one that has manufactured the cigarette says that what you are doing, if you take this cigarette, it's going to be harmful to your lungs. Drinking it, smoking, it's going to destroy you. After reading, they light their fire. And begin to smoke. They are committed. They are addicted. To what has. In court. Enslaved them. When you are committed to something. You don't check the regs. The second thing about commitment is that. It does not check status. A 
A lot of people are committed because you have something. It looks like they are normal because they are, they, you have something. Somebody says something. He says that there is no poor person who is humble. No poor man is humble. If you want to see a humble person or a committed and a devoted person, give him money. The reason why he is cool, the reason why he is responding, the reason why he is always coming around is because you have something. If you lose it today, are you still going to see him? Your commitment level is going to be determined when there is difficulties. When everything is pascaring, like that is our pascar. You can really tell if your wife is committed or your husband is committed. Not when you have in abundance. But when you've lost everything and she's still there and he's still there and the guys are still with you in the ministry. That is when you can assess their commitment level to you. But not when you can afford everything. Tells you that they were just sicko fans. We are working with. Are you with me? Yeah. So as you begin to check the ricks and if I go and I die, commitment, when Jesus became committed to us, he knew that he was going to die. But he said, yes, I will come. I will come for man. Nothing is going to stop me. Nothing is going to stop me. Let's read the scripture in Ruth chapter 1 verse 15 to 17. Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1 verse 15 to 17. Ruth chapter 1 verse 15 to 17. I'm going to talk to you on being committed to your Naomi said look your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her God follow your sister-in-law that was Opa 16 but Ruth replied do not persuade me to leave you or go back and not to follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. 17. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me. And even more, if anything but death separates you and me. Amen. Let me hear your response. Amen. Amen. This is the reading of the Lord. You see? Thanks be to God. Some of you were born in charismatic, you have grown in charismatic, and you are going to die in charismatic. You don't hear, thanks be to God, in charismatic. Amen. Yeah. Now, this is a story about a lima leg, two sons, and a wife, Naomi. Things were better for them in the land of Israel, and there was farming on the land of Israel, and they decided to move to a different town as the land of Moab. They went to settle on the land called Moab. Just like most of Ghanaians moved to Nigeria to seek for greener pastures. Others are also traveling to America. When we call for people that want a visa to America to come, you'll be surprised that the whole congregation who love to be in America and who are we going to be here to do the church with? May God have mercy on us. Amen. Amen. So Naomi and the husband and two sons they traveled to the land of Moab. 
And when they got there, they had a place to settle. When they settled, these two guys had wives. They married. They married. Their husband died, and the two sons also died. If it was to be this time, I would be surprised if someone else would love to work with Naomi. It looks like anything good around you is dying. Why should I be with you? So there was this lady by name Ruth and the other woman was Opa. The two of them decided now to look for another husband. But Naomi said that I have heard that on the land of Israel the Lord has blessed us again so I need to go back. Because I came to make life and it didn't work out. I've, I've lost everything. So I am urging you. I'm telling you, the two of you, go back to your, your people. Go back to your family. And go back and serve your God. On your land, you don't serve our God. Our God, Yeshua Hamashiach, Yahweh. That is who I serve. But you don't serve my God. So go back to your people and go back and serve your God. For me, I am going back to the land of Israel. And of course, if it was me, I was going to say, okay, because I need to get another guy and get married too. I don't know when you, Naomi, you are going to get married and give birth to another son for me to wait for that son and get married to that son. So there is no need following you. Even if I have to follow you, I shouldn't be following you because I want a son. I can't serve you. So goodbye, Naomi. God bless you as you go. And the Lord calls everything to work for you. And Opa returned back to his family. And Naomi said to Ruth, that Ruth, this is what I want you to do. You have to make sure that You follow your sister-in-law. Go with her. And Ruth said that. You don't have anything now. I don't see you with anything. But this is how I'm promising myself. That I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Wherever you go, I will follow you. Your people shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. Wherever you die is where I will die. And you'll be buried, I will be buried there. I'm not going to leave you today. No, for that was a great sign of commitment to the woman when she had nothing in her life. This lady said, I'm committed to you. I want to follow you. I want to lead you. I want to go to wherever you are going. And I want to make sure that my life is also better. Amen. And now let's, let's, let's learn some things from this scripture we just read. Your future. Your future. Your commitment to your future. Ruth saw that her future is connected to this woman. She had the foresight. She could read into that there is going to be the next generations that is going to come and that generation she must be part of that generation and the only thing that can cause her to be part of that generation in the genealogy of Jesus Christ to get married to a Boaz and a Boaz give birth and that lineage moves through that a Messiah comes even though I am not connected, even though I'm not a child of the Israelites, I need to get alignment with this. And it is going to happen in a hard time. Where I am coming from a good family, I have to forget everything and follow this woman who have lost everything, including human beings. So she said, I have a dream. As 
ruth and my dream is to be part of the genealogy and this is my opportunity to grab it so she said wherever you die i will die i don't care what is going to happen to me i don't know what we are going to eat tomorrow but i want to follow you so that we walk back to your hometown the first point that can help you to be committed to your future is to have a big dream somebody say i will have a dream come on say it we say i will have a dream if you are here and you don't have any dream you are not focused there are some of you if i ask you right now that if i give you 10000 cities what will you do you have to think about it for the next 3 days you don't have a dream at your age you are more than 12 years and you don't know what to do tomorrow you don't have a dream there are some people every second they change a dream unless they see they, they don't see ronaldo playing and they come out with what ronaldo is taking hey i have to be a footballer you see him jogging the next day he's jogging and the next time you check and you see the holy field is taking this amount no i have to become a boxer no i, I need to become and he checks again and he see a pastor preaching and how much his wealth say so, no i i need to start a church and i need to start fast and need to you are confused <laughs> You don't know where you are going. What is going to become of you in the next 5 years? You don't know. You don't have a dream. You don't have any commitment to anything that taking you to your future. You don't have a future. If it happens, it happens. You are still waiting on the God. For what? You don't know. The Lord knows best for your life and you are still waiting for him. O nyame anka se no de me be ye ne ono ape. Me de me me nim ne me pe nyame ne ono nim ne me pe nti. O nyame de o se o be hwa se me me hwa kwatafo so. You must be determined but first you must be committed to something. What are you committed to? What do you want to become? 10 years from now you are still clapping your hands and praying. For what? A miracle. What miracle? Money to do what? You don't know. When the money comes, I will think about what to do. In the next 10 years, in the next 100 years, if we are talking about people that have come to this earth, what are we going to say about your life? What impact are you designing? Do you have a future? Your future starts with your dream. Start with your dream. Your life you hear that it is good to sell nails and you you start planning about nails. It is good to sell pure water. Listen, whatever you do consistently and you are committed, you get result. Who told you it is only public toilet that there is money? In? Who told you? I need to get some public toilet and some bath house be you see that one people who told you there is nothing new under the sun whatever you see people doing people have been successful in it you first have to dream about something just pick one thing and be committed to it your problem is that you have a lot of dreams and god knows if it is even a dream So as you are walking you are scattered while walking you are always thinking about 2% of every business in this life 2% 2% where is your commitment level what is your dream what do you want to become even if you are a preacher you have to have a dream by your future your future listen take it from me your future is not going to happen automatic it is not just going to happen orchestratedly that it is going to 
happen by a miracle. It is a consciously effort being built. You have to, you have to be deliberate to build it. We build future. It does not just fall on you. The people you see that have been successful took time to build it. If he decided to become a doctor, they sat down to read books, to study. Study. There is no shark, there is no person that I've read, that I've studied well. You have studied well. And you know you can solve a lot of past questions. That they will give you a question anytime you see a student chanting, Yan Trobia, Yan Those people have not learned. I'm telling you. Check, check records. Obian Tro, we will never write. That's what we will. Check them. Whereas some people are saying, Wadia, why? Others are also chanting. The people that don't study are people that suffer so much in the exams hall. They sweat, keke. I'm not saying that you must always be studying. If it is a business you, you want to do, there are some people they don't have that mind to study, but they are good. Get that formalities. You can speak well, you can write, you can do some of things and channel that commitment. To your dream. To your dream. Are you with me? Are you here with me? Yes. So first have a dream. Have a dream. Get a dream. I've met people who, who are doing one thing and they are saying that this is what I want to become. This is just a normal thing. I'm just doing this one. I'm just, I'm just here. I'm saving money to go to school. I want to become a doctor. If you see me farming, that I'm, I don't want to become a farmer. I want to become a doctor. I want to become an engineer. But I don't have the money. And this time, this is the opportunity to bake bread, to sell, and to make sure I be, I'll be able to fulfill that. That is why I'm doing that. Are, are you with me? So the focus, he has a dream. He's driving his, his strength and commitment to something else. To something else. So first, get a dream. Sit down. Check what do you want to become. Who do you want to become? Stop, keep changing it. Be focused. Get one thing. And begin to work around it. Because if you don't have that dream, you cannot be committed to anything. Your commitment must get into something. And stop following others. You are following people. You, you, walk, you walk about haphazardly. Anywhere we pass, we see you gallivanting every corner. We see you every corner, everywhere. We see you. We see you with your, with that your slippers and and because where you you walk about a lot of dust. We can see a lot of dust in your trial. And, and and there was one guy. The trial, the bars of the trial is very big, and it will be under his chalowete, and he will be moving about, and the, and the trouser will be blowing some some dust, and you see him as if he just came from Galamse, but from a dry land. No focus. Why? Because he doesn't have any channel, any dream that he's committed to. Amen. Somebody say, I'll be committed. Say it, say it, I'll be committed. Yeah. I'll be committed. When we were in school, there was one guy that I always advised his parents that you, you let this guy alone. You give him a lot of pressure because he was, his name was called Matthew Quenu. I don't know where he is now. Matthew, Matthew Quenu. Matthew Quenu always comes to school. I, I've told you about him. Eh? He always comes to school when it is time for intercom. You only see Matthew when there is time for football. There's, there is a football, time for football, at least time. Then he comes to school. See that he's going to play number nine. <laughs> he gave one goalkeeper shot and the guy vomited in the goalpost. Yes, he can drivel, he can. But when you give Matthew Quenu, and you see, he, the subject he was even studying was even a bomb. He was studying elective mass. Matthew Quenu studying elective mass. 
You are just destroying the future of that boy. Marty can speak English. Marty can write. Allow him. Take him to a soccer camp. Let him be camping. In a, take him to a football camp. To build him. So he will not come. Amen. He was a good footballer. But they missed it. They missed it. Now, if your child wants to go with the days where we didn't value football. But today, I'm not a football fan. I heard that one, one um, f- f- soccer team scored the other 8-2. I don't know which is which. It's just because it has become popular that I can say some. I, I'm not. Amen. Sometimes when I see my son's statues and they are placing footballers' name, and some of the names I don't know. If you, I will, I cannot mention. I will not mention. I will not worry myself. Amen. You should have a goal. You should have a dream. You should have a dream. Anytime you are checking on you, there is something it must get from you. What are you following? What do you want to become? You want to become a caterer. And why? That is cool. So I'm saying that the first one, this lady Ruth had a dream. She knows what she saw in Naomi. That to the point that this lady, I, I, I don't know how she, she was able to figure it out. I don't know. Because from my research, I realized that Ruth was coming from a very good home. She was in a palace. Ruth. She was not somebody that was miserable. Somebody that was looking for something to eat. So it is just like, just like somebody coming from somewhere and meeting, let's say, the, the son of Kennedy Japan or the daughter of Kennedy Japan. She's coming from a good home. And to say that I have, I've denounced, I'm not going to follow the man, I'm not going to follow uh, um, Kwame despite again, I'm not going to follow the family, I'm not going to follow the God they serve, I want to follow you. That you came from Nigeria and when you came, even your husband and your two sons, you've lost them, that you don't have anything. You are going back to Nigeria and you don't have anything. I still want to follow you. It takes somebody with a very high vision about his future to follow you. If I'm a mother, I will not allow this. I'm a father. I will not allow this. I don't know how many fathers and mothers will allow this one. That you leave your daughter to follow an old woman who has lost everything. Everything. You've lost everything. We allow our daughter to follow you to a land that we, we, we are in a high conflict with. You see, the land of Moab, they are the people that when Israelites were moving to their promised land, Balak commanded Balaam to curse them. So they have that serious conflict that a tribe that by the grace of God now some things, is, some things are broken, that from you, this, I went to, I went to bless a marriage and the other tribe said they will not allow the guy to marry the lady because he's coming from a certain tribe in Ghana. But to the extent that pushing their daughter out, the lady said that I want to follow this woman. She had a goal. And I told you, Sometimes you can see somebody, a wretched guy like David, who has just killed Goliath, who is stinky, 
Rudy. She's she's he's smelling. He's a shepherd, he's a full honey boy. And there's some a prince is saying that I have a covenant with you. I will remain faithful to you. It is serious. Amen. So you can sometimes look at a church like Jewel Life Chapel where they have started and you come to church. By the time you come to the church, you see the landlord with a padlock locking the church. And you cannot pay your bills and you have service and there are rain falling and you are collecting the rains in the midst of the church. Yet you are saying that this is the church I want to follow. That is when we can see your commitment. When the church is not giving you anything physical. But yet you want to come around. See your commitment. You say I will follow them. I will follow you. I will be with you. Some people are waiting until they see. That the place is clean. The place is filled with air conditioning. And a good sound. And, and you come to church. There is no dust on the chairs. And everything is okay. That is when they prove commitment. Mm. Amen. So the first point she had was to have a goal. And you must have a goal. Don't just walk about. As I'm people, by the time they move from SHS 1 to SHS 3, they have changed courses about seven times. No, I want to be a graphic designer. No, no, no. I've forgotten. I want to become a doctor. No, no. A doctor. No. You see, the reason why I don't want to study medicine is because of, you see, that subject. Eh? No. I have to move to the technical class. No. Even with the technical class, the, the, the core mass and the electives combined and, and that one, I cannot, no. I have to move to home accounts. Ah, but with whom it comes to, it's not easy preparing for our source and making the case. Charlie Mikra and I want to sell at Cantamanto. Hey! And to be to add your Cantamanto, no one may have break with you. Amen. Recently, somebody called me. I advised, I advised her that your son cannot do, cannot read signs. Yeah. Of, of his capacity, he cannot. People that read science, they are not easy. He cannot. More or less, where he is schooling, you know, science will not help him. So let him change. But she said she had a dream that the science said, Doctor. So that is possible. But the line is not going to help. Wasted four years or so, come back with a blast result and so currently she called me and she said I'm finding a treat for my son so you see I just, just you, are, you are wasting his future future I went to Kolebu and a girl I think around 26 years was consulting sat before a tiny girl about 26 I asked her what's your name she said, Dr. Nette, how old are you? She said, she reserved. But I, I know she's, she's very young. Now when you go to hospitals, you see tiny, tiny girls and guys, small, small boys. So you speak to me, please, I want to see the doctor. I say, I'm the doctor. You are looking for an old man to, to talk to you. Twenty-six years, twenty-seven years, you are becoming doctors. You see? For 34 years. We just finished HSS. <laughs> See. Are always on the battlefield. North deck fighting here and there every time. Charlie, be focused. Drive on something. Like joke, like joke, the things I'm telling you, if you are to pick them, it's going to help you. It's going to help you. 
There are certain lines we we picked. Some of us were being advised, but we didn't see it earlier. By the time you realize you've wasted about 15 years, you are coming to start again. They say, had I know, it's always at last. Be smart and pick it now. Take it now. Take the advice now. Get, get a dream. Be committed to it. Be committed to it. Get a dream. Get a dream. Number two, get some help. Get some help. Number two, how can you be committed to your future? Get some help. When you get a dream, don't fight it alone. Can't fight it alone. Get, you need help. You need help. There should be somebody who can assist you. This is because you are not the first person that is dreaming about what you want to become. The future you are seeing, the Bible says that there is nothing new under the sun. Whatever you think about has already been there. Whatever has already been there. So, the moment it comes in mind, you are just uncovering something that was hidden. Get some help. You need help of what you want to become, of the goal. Get close to a pastor. Get close to anybody that has been able to do it. Without that help, if you are to get the help, it's going to help you to achieve that goal. Amen. So, this lady saw that something good can come out of her life, but she needed help. Most of the times, we really want to speak to somebody who have, who have achieved so much. A lot of them don't have some experience. I love to listen to this servant of God that is dead. Apreku. Apreku. Love to listen to him. Because I, I, I thought that by taking some of the things he did, it's going to help me take off some mistakes. Amen. Speak to people who have done the business and have failed. They didn't work well for them. Speak to them. My father, for instance, discouraged me from provision shop. Now let's say a mall. Because in this time it was a mall, but we called it provision store. Very big, like the whole church room. And he introduced basket shopping first in Akemo down. Do basket shopping. You enter in the 90s, you enter the, the shop with, with a basket to shop. I remember when they sell, they would call us to come and count the money. And I was angry. Because you'll be, you be arranging the money, ah, you'll not finish that. I was a young boy. <laughs> you arrange the money, ah. That time there was no, we didn't have any counting machine. So you arrange the money, you arrange it, you arrange it. When the money is full in the cabinet, they have to pour it. We take it to a small room inside and we arrange the money. We count it. Then we put the rubber band and put it here. I'll be arranging the money. I don't finish that. So when they say that, come and count the money, then I'm angry. I was a small boy. <laughs> but you see, there was little, little profit on those things. Small, small. Little profit. You sell one soap, it's 20 pesos your profit. 
if you're able to sell the whole box, it's one city, 20 pesos. Small, small. But if it's sum up, it becomes something big. And he said, do you know what? A lot of people think about you. They calculate, they, they imagine your profit. That if you have such a big shop, then you have a lot of money. But the little they don't know is that your profit is very little. So when they take something huge from it, you may not see, but you've lost much. By the time he realized, banks were selling his house and they sold the house. He has to move from the city of Wanda to his village. He lost everything. One day I was working with him in town, in Accra. He came to town and I started driving him around. He said, Pastor, you know Accra power? I said, yes. I'm the king of Accra. <laughs> Small corner, so I don't know anywhere to. And when we got down, he took something wrapped in the sun and he showed it to me. And he said, do you see this? And I said, yes. He asked, what is it? I said, this is these are diamonds. He said, yes. These diamonds worth about 10 billion. That is old CDs. But it is in my pocket. That is what he said. But it is in my pocket. How will you know that I have this money on me? But if it was a provision store, anybody that sees me will attack me and feel that I have money. And that is true. Are you with me? Yes. And what he said actually discouraged me. But I've never thought to be in a provision store. So the, the dream you have, there are people who have much experience and knowledge about it. You want to become a doctor? All your friends are carpenters. You have friends that are conductors. A lot of, anybody that is calling you, anytime somebody calls you, you can hear, mata eko, mata eko, mata eko. You, are, you have a lot of people that are doing something negative to what you want to become. It is wrong. Get close to people that can help you achieve your dream. Amen. So get some help. Get some help. Number three, ten your dreams into goals. Don't just have a dream. Don't just have a dream. It is sad when you hear people talk about what they wanted to become. Somebody like me, I wanted to become a bank manager. I, I, just, I just love to be a bank manager. But along the line, I realized that no, I'm called into ministry. And there was one man of God that had a problem with me. Because I realized he was testing me. Sometimes we will be walking and he will, he will stop me and he will ask. Supposing somebody gives us 100,000 Ghana cities each. What are you going to do with your money? I'll tell him, I'll build a church. The first thing I'll do is I will build a church. When God decided to bless me, when God started blessing me, the first thing I decided to do is to start this church building. By then I was renting. I started building. I bought a land. Said, I will build a church. Because nothing, when even we had two people in the service, I was excited. I'll show you some pictures. You will see Brother Eben, his neck and the head. You see Jennifer, very little. I saw Jeff. I saw Jeff's picture. Young boy, but today you see him, I will show his picture and I will let him come and stand here. He doesn't know when I will do that, so he will come to church. What I want to say is that there has been a very big difference. And I will preach with an excitement that nothing can break me from, nothing can separate me from my calling. That I know, I'm a, everywhere I go, I introduce myself as a pastor. I'm a pastor. I'm not a businessman, I'm a pastor. I may be doing business. But I'm a pastor. I'm called to be. My, my commitment is to church. It's to the ministry. 
It's the calling of God. That is my commitment. That is my future. I see the church as my future. Nothing else. Nothing else. You can't take it away from me. So if people come to church, if they don't come to church, I'm still called to preach the word of God to people. If I don't get the people, I'll preach to chairs. By the grace of God, we have enough chairs so I can preach to them. Hallelujah. Yes. If your commitment to your future is to be selling and it is only two things you are selling. I used to see Manye. When she started her shop, you see, she would dress very early in the morning. As if she is going to Accra. But the shop is just in front of the house. She would dress. Eh? She would buff dress and do her makeup and come to the shop. Come and sit down. She's committed to it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not changing it. This is what I want to do. Committed to it. If somebody comes or nobody comes, you are still doing it. You keep, you keep, your commitment is going to provide, it's going to give you the result. It's going to give you the result. Amen. So get a goal. And if you get the help, it is going to help you. That person is going to assist you get a good goal. So that you don't take a goal of becoming a doctor when you cannot do it. There's something else you can do. You can, you can, you can I think, divert to something else which you will still end up in the hospital. Yeah. You still end up in the hospital because there are some of the things when we give you, and you see, you, you want to become a doctor and you are watching Kwando Siasmeya and the other one, the other one that came on, on Kunkum Wanwan, there was that one, Kunkum something. Kunkum what? Bangia. Kunkum, what does that mean? Kunkum, what does that mean? Is it a tree language or whatever? A gun. You don't know. Oh, you don't know. But you were so much excited, excited that you don't want to miss it. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. When we give you a science book, you begin to doze. But you know all the story from the beginning of Kunkum Bagi. I, I think it took them about 12 years to finish that movie. <laughs> How many years? 15? Five years. What a shock. <laughs> and you were following for five years. <laughs> As some of us, you know all series. You don't have any book. Any book. You don't read any, any book. Your mind, if you want to become an academician, you have to get a lot of books. Get books. Everything you see, you must read. You don't want to read. You give your time to, to movies. Yes. You download them. YouTube, if you are bundling, you are not bundling to just Google and research things. You want to download movies from YouTube. You, you, you know all the foreign movie sites. You can watch. Ah, you are wasting your future. Wasting your future. I spoke to one man who said that I've, I've taken my children to the seamstress. There's lockdown. They are not going to school. They are ladies. I want them to learn how to sew. They must show, they must get something. They must get a skill. Get a skill. Your future is not going to happen by pouring only oil on your head. Invest in it consciously. Take time. Have somebody as a mentor to help you. Church, are you with me? Yes, don't only come and pray and go. Read books. Get business books. You want to become a bit? Read books, read books. Let your mind open. Even if it doesn't do anything to you, it will make your mind open. It will give you confidence to speak, to stand. That's why there are certain shops you cannot enter. You have money to buy, but you cannot enter. You have low self esteem. If you begin to read more, it will open your mind. It will open, it, you, you, you comment on certain things that you think is useful. You don't have confidence. You have to build up. 
Our lives must change as a church. You are youth. Please get a go. Get somebody to help you. To let you know that where you, that, no, this one will not help you. Don't worry yourself here. Let your commitment get to the side. Me, I can help you. I'm a very good coach. I can help you. I can reshape you. And there are some people, when you see they are lying to help them, you push them there. Because they are not committed to that, eh? they force themselves out. They, they, don't feel, they don't fit in. Say, no, I want you to read this book. Me, I have suffered reading books. So I have suffered. It was like, if you really want us to go, then you have to read the book. Sure. <laughs> when my wife is coming in our midst, and in the midst of the prophets, where we were grouped in a very big house, when she's, she's entering the, the land of the prophets, we, be, we begin to call her Professor, Professor. And any time she is coming, she comes with a book for me. Say, prophet, you must read. Take this book and read. And the next time I meet you, you are going to tell me what you read about this book. Because all our lives were about, God opened my eyes, opened my ears. Let me see and let me hear so that I can prophesy. Somebody shall prophesy. prophesy. So we were prophesying, sir. Prof, prof, Charlie Prof. But the, the ones that added reading to their prophecy, to their prophetic, the prophetic, they have a stand in the nation telling you they have been separated. Education, eh? church, after prayer, take education. I'm telling you some things. Some of the things. <laughs> After prayer, the next thing you must take, education is the highest leverage you can get on this earth. If you want to get a good future, you are a mother, you are a father, you didn't go to school, sell your dresses and let your children go to school. Help them. If it demands bribing them, bribe them with KFC to study for you. And in their future, they will be proud of you. Don't only send them to prayer meetings. Help them to read. Help them to build something for their future. If you want your child to be the best and to have confidence in himself, Educate him or her. Help your children to go to school. Go to school. You get a leverage. At least it is going to help you. When everything has failed, education will hold him like Gilaiko. Gilaiko insurance. If you have not done Gilaiko insurance, I'm giving you. Straight on, like, I'm advertising for Gilaiko. Gilaiko must see me. It's a shock. When everything has failed you, your good cars and the good road have failed you, Glyco insurance will hold you. And that is education. So please, if you don't have a goal, I'm giving you a goal now. One of your goals is to at least be committed to education. Anything about school, anything about books, anything about reading. Even if you don't become a teacher or a professor or, or a banker or whatsoever, you can start a company to open your mind to start something for yourself. Help you. It will help you. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I will educate myself. And by educating yourself, does not necessarily mean only getting to the classroom. Hmm? You can read books. You can sit down, you can study from people that have made it. And it's going to help you. What I want to say is that stop your devotion and your dedication to movies. To movies. You watch movies too much. You don't read. 
You don't want to be informed. You don't want anything new to your life. You're always watching movies, watching jokes. And you see now, if you want, if you want your channel to grow, you must get stuff that is in quote nonsense. Eh? When you get the papano, the papano trend on your channel, you see how it will grow. Everybody wants to listen to those nonsense and those short, short, those short, short jokes. Your channel will grow. But if you are teaching something that is going to help the future of that person, it is a problem. It is a problem. Are you with me? Yes. So get a goal. Get a goal. If you are a seamstress, you are sewing, it is not helping. People are complaining about the armpit. You can say to yourself, me, I know. Pa, the only problem I have is the armpit. But there is somebody who can sew without the armpit. Getting a problem. Get close to that person to help you. Whatever you do that you think is not working, you must get help. Get that help. Get the help. But dear, 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 when you say me, come, when you pop, 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 now me, me, can you open a yaba? What can when you be a na yaba? I told you, when you dey, you can't pa. And now when dey, you feel free, you feel free, you feel free, you can't be go. Amen. So somebody say, I will set a goal. Say, I will have a dream. Amen. So if you can recruit somebody for your life, for the goal you are setting, it's going to help you. 10, 10, whatever you couldn't do, you can start investing that in your children. And it's going to help. This morning, I've, I've taken my time to talk to you about how you should be committed to your future. Because your future is not only going to happen by prophesying to you. I see you making it. I see you going to America. And I see you making a big shop. And I see you with 50 shops, branches. Ah, as I'm talking now, I can see that there are a lot of money in your account. It is good. But after those prophecies, you must get up. You must rise up. You must work. You must be committed to it. You must be committed. You must be committed. Yesterday, we, we went to a place. I went with Dick and Randy to, to a place for, for some wallpaper. And when we got there, it was a Chinese man. He was in a boxer shorts. He's the boss of the place. He's in a boxer shorts. Everywhere we pass, the guy will follow us. Follow us. Convincing us to buy. We pick this one, he brings another one. Look at this one too. And he begins to explain. This one from Italy. This one is from China. The Chinese, can, they can make it big. This one in Italy, they make it this. this, this, this. Well, check this one too. Check that one too. He will follow us everywhere. So if it was me, I videoed his, his warehouse a lot. I cross my leg and I sit down and I call them, hey, Jimmy, Papa Pano, call around. And you see, they try, you can beat them by maybe speaking some tree. But he's following you. He's not just following because of the money you are going to pay but to convince you to buy. He's not going anywhere. You can feel that guy in the there is heat. So he has removed everything. Left it only the boxer. There were ladies there, he doesn't mind. Looking for his money. Amen. Don't leave that shop to Dubai for the boys. Four days, you have not been to the shop. Oh, the guys are working. Oh, they are working. They are not committed to what you are doing. That is your future. Anything that is connected to your future, don't sleep over it. 
Rise up. Be committed to it. Be committed. Sometimes if I have to check something on the iPad, I've seen something I need to refer, and I'm, and I'm lying down and I'm reading, and I'll hear a voice. This is your future. You must work it. Get up. You have to rise up and make it work. So the books you are studying, the shop. Tomorrow, can you come to work? It's not there, my brain, my brain. May I do my bit? No, me, me, me. Oh, can we pass? I'm a ton. You man, oh, Charlie, me, I'm here on Monday. It will never happen. It will never happen. Wherever you are, they will fly. The guy that led me there, he will not let you sleep. He will make sure you have come. If he takes the money, and you, you can go anywhere you want to go. He must get hold of the money first. Don't joke with your future. Your future is not only in prophecies. It also depends on what you are doing today. Be committed to that. But if you don't have anything, what will you be committed to? To movies. That is why you are fighting to buy the 699 TV from NASCO. And you want the one with a pen drive so that you can load movies and slot it. And when you lie on the bed, you will watch. You're wasting your future. You're wasting your future. You're wasting your life. You're moving to parties. As some people, when I check their status, they're moving to this party, they're moving to that party. Everywhere you see them. Party, partying everywhere. Hey! You love parties, Papa. Set a milestone. The next point, set a milestone. You set a milestone. You set a milestone. Get steps. That's going to help you see your future. Is that what I have always wanted to become? Yes. When we were having our service, then it was raining. I keep saying to the church members that were with me, that one day you will see me preaching to the whole world. You watch me on your TV. You watch me on the internet. You will see me preaching. The, I have not stopped that. I can see one milestone happening. And I'm moving. This congregation is small. I have said that the place must be filled. And I have said that we have to move from this place. This place is going to be a branch. We are going to have a very bigger place. Where we will have our banks. We will have our hospital. We will have the church. We will have a university. We will have it on the same land. It is a goal. I'm moving towards it. You want to meet a chief. And we told him, you want about 100 acres. What is the price? There was no money. But it's a goal. You are still working on it. And a milestone, we will start with maybe an acre. We will get there. Yes. Set a goal. Set a milestone. Set something for yourself. This is what I want to achieve for my future. By December, I have to get a half plot of land. It is your future. If you don't take care, your children will come and insult you also. And to mama, I bet now I cry have 43 years. When to me, I'm not a plot of crime. I am. Gradually, you are growing. Gradually. And you still don't have the quarter plot. You accused your parents. There are lands everywhere. You campaign installment. Tree, tree, behind here, tree. There is no place that is far in Accra. I was moving with someone. He said that, I came to visit somebody here and I insulted him for living in the bush. Today, go and see. I was listening to one great man of God at Banyard. He said that if he had known that this place was going to be like this, he could have taken the land up to Sotium. It should send something to you that your future, gradually, gradually, gradually. First you were alone, so it was single room self-contained. And by now, you have moved to somebody's room, which is two bedroom. Well, don't worry, when your children are four or five, you go to five bedroom, but it is not for you. Something must tell you that your future must work it out. Even if it is not a half plot, get a quarter plot. Look for somebody that you can afford a half plot with. Divide it into two. Build your house on it. 
Where I'm living now, I keep saying it, it is less than a half plot, but I have five bedroom house with a big hall, story building, and two, two car, cars can park on my, and I have an aeropad. I have an, where aeroplane can, a, a, a jet can land on the land. I've built a house where helicopter can come and land on my house. So if I'm not doing anything like David, I will be strolling at the top there and I'll be looking at people's up and pim. It's a shock. The land I bought, eh, people bought those, they bought the land. And they came back and told the landlord that, give me back my money. This is too small. I cannot do anything with this land. Give me back my money. But I said to myself, where I am renting, it is less than a quarter plot where I'm, I'm, I'm renting. It is less than a quarter plot. So even if I get a quarter plot and I build something for myself, it is safe. No landlord will come and attack me. No landlord. Today, a land in Kaswa is almost 100,000 Ghana cities. Kaswa. You are still here. People are buying land close to Winneba. You are still here. You are saying that you still want a land in Kaneshi. Okay. But have in mind that it is your future. Do something about it. Now. Do something. Do something. Amen. Get a future. We sat down one day about 10 years ago and we said to ourselves that we don't have to rent anything. We are even planning by the grace of God to get, to get our own fuel. <laughs> Because one of the things that kills people in Accra is the house where you use for your business and food. So think about this. If it is a shop, you see, that, that guy, eh, most of the things today is online. Don't worry yourself, go to Okanshi for a shop. That is 120,000 Ghana cities. Just a small shop. 120,000 Ghana cities at Okanshi. It will buy a house, a property, a full house. He keeps all the things in the house. And he will display online. So if you, if you see it, he will direct you to his office. Wager. And you will come and buy. You can start your business also from your house. Think about your future. The prophecies we are prophesying, they are going to work. Yes. But you have to do something about your future. Keep saving. Start saving. Save. Save. Save towards the land. Save towards the building. Save. So the project committee sat down and said that we are not going to get a huge money. Maybe by miracle it will happen. Listen, the truth of the matter is that when the church is blessed, when I'm talking about the church, I'm talking about you. When you are blessed more, we get more funds to build. But in this season, in this pandemic, a lot of people are being hit. So the inflow, the cash that is coming to build, it's not coming. That's the truth about it. It's not coming. So you're not going to see anything that you come today, the place is covered, you come tomorrow, we have painted, it is not going to happen. So we sat down and said that every week we must work. Yesterday, the guys and some of the ladies were here and they were able to pick blocks, 130 pieces. It is up here. You can't see it, but it is here. So for one week, we've been able to buy 130 blocks. You might think that it is small. The next time you see, you will see a wall that has appeared at the top. Gradually, you'll be doing something. If you get the plot, don't leave it. Don't tell yourself, how much am I going to use to start a foundation? 50,000 Ghana City. Hey, where am I going to take that money from? Let them start digging. 
when they finish digging, buy a bag of cement. Lay it down. Go for blocks. Even if it is two weeks and you can get 100 blocks, get it. As you keep doing it, if you are committed to it, by the time you realize you have a house, it may not be like a house in Trazaku, but at least it will be better than the one you are living in now. Because the one you are living in now, eh, you are the 67th tenant in it. The house has suffered enough. But you have to live in. And you see, when they do the paint mom in toy and you come in, Charlie, this house is nice. Oh. Remember, it's not for you. That is not for you. And two years, two years will come very soon. Two years will appear very soon. And some of us, we have our parents' house. So it is okay with us. But there is something you are also missing for your children. Your parents have left you a house. What are you leaving for your children? Living, some of us, we were not fortunate to get our parents building in Accra. They built, but not in Accra. And we want to live in Accra. So we have to start the pace. Set a milestone. By December, I have to start paying for a land. Half plot is okay for me to start. Start with that. Own a land. Don't just give your money to anybody. Look for a land that have no litigation. These estate developers, get close to them. They have acquired and they can fight for you when there is any problem. Because in Accra, to buy a land, now wow, that does not mean you should live it. Amen. So, set a milestone for yourself about your future. That I want to own a 20 bedroom house with five acres of land as my, as my car park or compound. But how am I going to start it? I just have to start a house. So build a house. Make all the mistakes about building. Because I don't know when we are going to get that $800,000 to buy the house that you have been seeing on TV. This is where I want to live. Oh. I, mean, I don't want to live at any place. Oh. Those places in Kaneshi and Odoko and Mataiko, I don't want to live under, look at NIC. If I walk in, there are stones everywhere and dust. Those places, I want to live in cantonment. God bless you. It is good. That's a good dream. But be careful. Because if you don't take care, your corpse will never ever get to cantonment. To still be in Bawe. Amen. And if you search, you get a milestone. If you set that for your future, assess it. Assess it. We said to ourselves that this year, no matter what happens, we will sleep at the top of our house. We will move to the next floor. And by the grace of God, we will get there in Jesus' name. It's not only about prayer, but it's about planning. And it's about focusing and getting committed to that one. I wanted a four by four car. God is going to bless you to bless me. Uh, but I'm thinking about myself also to bless myself. Amen. So if you get the money and you buy it for me, God will bless you. Yes. But I'm still not waiting for you. I'm planning to also buy it. So if you buy it, I will get two. Hello? Yeah. The mindset of waiting for somebody to help you is good. But plan on how to work for yourself. Let it work also. How can you feed yourself? Oh, tomorrow, oh, they can give me 20 cities. I know. I can see prophetically. I feel it within me. He's going to bless me. There's something you can do that can help you earn that 20 cities also. Think also about that one. Let your mindset be shifted. Me, even if I don't go to school, my uncle is at the cocoa board. He will fix me somewhere. I know. I know my uncle. There are, there are a lot of um, what's their name? Is it Vigilantes that's 
fought for MPP. I heard one who have cursed Sir John. I don't know if you've heard about that tip. Yes, one of the guys that helped MPP. He said he helped MPP. He cursed Sir John. He cursed Sir John. And when Sir John died, they said that it was because of his curses. His problem was that when they fought for MPP, and MPP came to power, he only wanted a national security or BNI. Is it BNI or national security? He wanted to work at the Flagstaff House or to be in the Army, Army and national security. <clears throat> and brother, you didn't go to school. How can we fix you there? How can we? So you see somebody who just appeared from journalism becoming an MP and becoming a minister. He can speak well. He had the facts. He can present himself. He didn't fight. He didn't beat anybody. He just comes and they make him information minister. A young boy. And he controls everything. A new Mr. Fighter. You are hungry. He said he sold his things to help MPP. Charlie, your future, eh? Don't play with it. Don't let anybody mess up with your future. Let people fight for you. To keep you. That we don't want to miss this guy. We must do our best to, to, to fight for this guy. He must come. So they said, That's, that information minister guy is a nice boy. You can't joke with him. He's not going to beat anybody when it's time for election. He'll be in his house and watching TV with his family and he'll be fighting. He'll be shooting. Ayawaso. Be killing people. Beating people. Blood coming. When they finish the fight. He said, can you please fix me at national security? He said, wait, wait, wait. To get your turn. The guy said he was being employed at forestry. And they were paying him 400 cities or so. 400 Ghana cities. His life is, he said, today, even the 400 Ghana cities for four months, I've not received salary. What have I done wrong? I've played with your future. I decided to speak to you calmly, quietly, to think about your life. Think about yourself. People are feeding you. People are blessing you. It may cease. What are you doing about your future? Invest in yourself now. Begin to think about some of the things that have embarrassed you and work towards them. The things you have seen your parents go through and it's time that you rise up and you clean those mistakes by investing in your future. Don't play, don't joke with your life. Stop watching movies. Kumawood movies. That is what is killing us. It's killing us too much. We don't want to read. We don't want to study. We don't want to know anything. It's all about movies. Foreign movies. Local movies. African movies. Please. You have to subscribe. Pay an amount every month because of movies. I've talked too much. But I'm passionate about your future. Your future. Your life. I don't want to see you miserable. I want to meet you at one car park with your land cruiser and your boys commanding money in the next 10 years. God bless you and God keep you.